guys, it's Cindy Leach, your Polymer Clay Tutor, and today's mini toot, we are going to do a little demonstration with some Renaissance wax. I did a, a full product demo on this a little while ago, but we're going to show you a couple of other things. I am here with Karen Cowger. We're in Spokane, and we're still on the <laughs> yeah. PCT road trip. This is our second road trip. And Karen was saying, when I got here, asked her if there was anything that she could use a little bit of help with. And you were saying you couldn't get the Renaissance wax to show much of a shine. A shine. It doesn't shine. It's just flat. And the reason for that is, um, first of all, what you want to do when you're using any kind of um, wax type finish for um, on top of your polymer clay, you want to make sure that the base that you have is already fairly shiny, like you've sanded and buffed it. Um, quite well. Now she has sanded these pieces very well, but then you also had another issue. You said you couldn't get it to shine at all. Right. And I'm not really sure why, um, but what I'm going to do is take a couple, she's got a couple of um, uh, little sample hearts here with some, it looks like a Natasha bead it technique. Is. That is what it is. That's what it is. And um, they feel really smooth, so they should be bringing up a shine. I'm going to see if I'm going to use my, I'm going to use my jewel tool um, felt wheel here and see if I can bring up a shine and then we'll put the renaissance wax and see if we can get something going on here for you know what I we need to solve this you. mystery <laughs> now what's that you'll do it I uh, you're pretty <laughs> sure all right so I'm just gonna this like I said in another video this is not where you'd put a jewel tool you'd have it on a lower table so that this wheel was just down below you and not sitting up here by your face but this is the way it is in this particular spot we're filming so I'm just going to show you I'm going to bring up the speed a little bit and we'll see if we can get a shine on here because you did sand it through all the grits oh yeah see I did it with only a few seconds as that. so maybe I don't know what were you using to buff it by hand yes by hand okay well I guess you you're not moving your hand to this I fast I guess <laughs> You're moving your hand a little slower. Yeah, no, I can get a shine on here. So I'm getting a shine with, um, can you see that, Doug, at all? Is it picking up? Okay. So wow. just a little bit of shine here we'll get on here. The smoother this piece is before you put the wax on, the higher the shine you can get the wax to do. And what wax does is it fills all those little micro pores and micro scratches in the surface and then what it does is it makes the light reflect off of that right okay. so shine is only coming because the light's coming and bouncing off the surface so if you have a bunch of little cracks and crevices in something it'll be more matte it okay. the light will sort of get lost in the the little crevices so that's how that works it's you know, that's my uh, layman's terms for science. <laughs> Non-scientific science. Now, I've got some of this Renaissance wax. Um, a nice cotton cloth will work. I've also got a little piece of paper towel. You need almost nothing as far as the wax goes. Okay. I just love this wax, as you can see. In fact, I almost want to put a moratorium on all sloppy glazes. <laughs> I want that to be banned because... When you properly sand and buff or wax your pieces, it feels amazing, doesn't it? It does. Okay, so it I've does. got a little bit of wax on here. In fact, I should probably get you to, to do one alongside here. That's okay. That's this okay? One, this one's not. Uh, yep. All right. Okay, so okay. we're going to let this dry a second and then just put it under the buffing wheel again. But you could also just do it. Can you see it's even going to do it by hand here? If I just buff this by hand amazing now. it's working right well, so i want to see that do it you want to see it only because i'm i put it in a corner and now it's out <laughs> no you're excited about it it is yeah. a super neat tool i love it because it's well it that. works it's quiet it doesn't take up much space now i'm sounding like that um shamwell guy yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it slices and dices okay now it doesn't slice and dice as far as i know Ooh, look at that. See, do you see that? Okay, so you have all of the, what you need now. You just have to get a little, um, 
heartfelt wheel for it. Uh-huh. But you have the tool now and the, the right wax, and you're going to have... Oh, my. With almost no effort. You see that? Not that it didn't take you effort to get here in the first place. Let's see oh how... Oh, my. And how does it feel? Just like butter. Just... Now, one thing I wanted to bring up you, with you guys. Wow. Customers, like if you're selling your pieces at all, or giving them away as gifts... People feel your work. They can't yeah. help it. Anything that's smooth or people are, are, well, a big percentage of people are tactile. So if they run their hand across your piece and it feels gritty and kind of, it, the quality it mentally will go back, even if it looks gorgeous. So it should feel good. Now, every surface doesn't need to be glossy and smooth. That isn't the point. It should just feel good. Like if it's meant to be bumpy and have some texture to it, it, it should it shouldn't feel like there's, it's dirty or gritty. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and turtle. What's that? Turtle. Yeah. Now your little turtle, she's got a turtle here that she's been working on. Oh, it's so cute. Oh, he, uh, he is cute. He's not done. I, he's not done. Yeah. Yeah. So the when it's unfinished, like it's not finished yet, we did play around with it a little bit with some of these other buffing wheels and stuff. You can feel there's... It's not quite finished. Mm -hmm. And what I think a lot of people do is they don't go far enough. They go 95%, 98%, but they don't take that just a little bit extra time to, to finish it off. And your your pricing, your value, your the quality that you've given it away to your friend or your, your family or something, the value just goes way up if it feels amazing. And you're just about there. You just... You've got a great design, a cute little guy here. When you finish him up with the sanding yeah. and the buffing and the waxing, it, it'll be... Hurry, Cindy. Hurry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm figuring out the right kits for polymer clay so that it'll be perfect for all of us to uh, use. It is a little on the pricey side, so not everyone will be able to get this, but for anyone that's doing a, a lot of work, yep. it will make a big difference. So... Now, have you got the, re is the Renaissance wax issue dealt I'm good. with? Uh -huh. I, so if you put it I on a matte it surface and it's not shiny, it will stay kind of matte. Okay. You can get a bit of a sheen, like a, a satin sheen, right. but you can't get that high gloss unless it's glossy underneath, or unless it's shiny and smooth underneath. Because otherwise that wax is just okay. going to sit in those little crevices and the light won't bounce off, right? Right. You got that? I need one of them. Yep. Yeah. All right, so I hope that was helpful for you. And if it was, make sure to press that like button. That would be great. And my question for you today is, have you tried using a finish like Renaissance Wax and had issues with it and, and it wasn't as shiny as you thought? And do you think this will be a helpful tip for you? Leave your comment in the comment section below. That would be great. And don't forget to subscribe. We have new videos that come out every week, and you're not going to want to miss this thing. So it was great having you here, and Thanks we'll coming. see you next time. Bye for now. Bye.